Hi, this is Tina. And this is Mary. And this is Books to Movies. Yay! <laughs> oh my god. It's been so long I forgot what it's called <laughs> since we started with one and never did, did it, it again. again. So today... We don't even have any theme music. No. Maybe I'll find some and if I do, I'll put it right here. Yes, do that. Okay. Okay. So if there was nothing there, I didn't find any. <laughs> we we had a plan in mm-hmm. 2016 to be better and actually do these again. Yeah. And our plan was in January to do the Girls with Dragon Tattoo, mm-hmm. and we didn't do it. No. But we're gonna do it now because, because our plan for February <laughs> was to do Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Yeah. And. It's apparently not showing anymore anywhere after it's been out for two weeks. Yeah. So. We had plans for today. Yes. We're like, oh, great. We'll go see it. We'll do the podcast. And then it's already gone. And yeah, the closest one was like an hour away. And since it got terrible reviews, we were not willing to drive that far to see it. No. So instead, we're going to do what we were supposed to do in January Mm -hmm. and we're recover <laughs> close enough <laughs> we're going to uh, talk about the girl with the dragon tattoo and yes it's going to be horrible because i thought i remembered it a lot better than i do <laughs> so after discussing with mary i realized i have terrible memory and don't remember much of it so well, we'll see how much i remember now we're also going to mispronounce all the names and we're super sorry and to <laughs> anyone from sweden i'm sorry nat yeah if you're listening i'm so sorry <laughs> Also, if you listen to our uh, Bird Barf podcast, which I'm sure you do since you're <laughs> only 12 people that sometimes listen to us. Or, <laughs> yeah. I think 12 is generous. You're probably, you know, two people that listen to us. Um, <laughs> and one of them's me and one of them's Mary. So yeah. we're trying to ourselves. It's That's awkward. Fine. Since we listen to Bird Barf. <laughs> anyway, uh, The Gold Dragon Tattoo, I listed as one of my favorite Christmas movies. However, <laughs> this Christmas, I ran out of time and did not get to watch it. Because I was wrapping presents on Christmas Eve, and it was awful, and so I couldn't watch the movie, so I did not have a refresher. Whereas I thought we were going to do this podcast, because Tina had texted me, like, when are we going to do the podcast? And I'm like, crap. So I hurried up and watched both of them in one day, in addition to, like, flipping through the book like a maniac, and typed up a bunch of notes. So uh, it's a bit much to watch two versions of that movie in one day. (laughs) So I think you could tell which one of us is, you know, the the teacher and prepares things, and which one of them's like, yeah, I'm just gonna wing it. Of course, like I said, and I did this last month. Goes so I'll probably forget everything. So. <laughs> anyway, so anyway. we're gonna, you know, try to do this. Yeah. So we're gonna start with so the book, of course, "Girl with the Dragon Tattoo" by Steve Larson. Um, it came out. It was published in 2005. Actually, posthumously, we had both thought that he was alive longer than he was. But uh, he wasn't. He died in 2004, but came out in 2005. And then, of course, was translated into everything ever. And because of that, then we wound up with two different movies. And so we're going to talk yes. about the book. And we're going to talk about um, the, the Swedish, Swedish film. film. And the American film, which is my favorite Christmas movie. <laughs> yeah. Yay. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, um, how, did you, how did you hear about this book? Um... I think, so this book was in bookstores everywhere, yeah. on shelves everywhere, mm-hmm. but I want to say that you, did you read it first, or did we, I, I don't feel remember. like my dad actually read it. Like, he saw it at the library, because they had a big setup for it, and he brought them home, or he brought the first one home, and then he and I both read it, and probably fought each other over it, because that's what we do with books. Yeah. And then I think I read it, and I said, hey, you should read this, because I enjoyed it, which is funny, though, because I went back and looked, I read it in 2011. The first time. Yeah. And I only gave it two stars. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I think that the series, all three of them, like, mm. I really like the story. Yeah. I like, I love the character. Well, I love Lizbeth. Yeah. <laughs> I don't love all the rest of them as much. <laughs> but it's a really good story. And I think that it just suffers from it needed to be edited really heavily. Yeah. There are a lot of storylines and a lot of stuff that I think really could have been cut out. Yeah, because Steve Larson's and, background was as a journalist. And he did a lot. Like, I, I, it's kind of funny because one of the things I note is that people like to call Lizbeth a Mary Sue. You know, she's, oh, she's the special one. She's the da-da-da. You know, she's so strange. Duh. No, it's Blomquist. <laughs> <laughs> he is very definitely an authorial stand-in. Like, he's, you know, 
we were making fun of this earlier because he's so, you know, in the original books, um, not the fourth one, which fuck that book, but um, which was not written by him. But he's like this kind of he's an all right looking guy. He's, he's an really average. Bad. Yeah. And like, you know, he's just sort of does things. And he's nice. And he has a work ethic and like, but people are just like in love with him. Yes. He, he sleeps with everybody. Yes. Everybody wants to sleep with him. And it's like, to the point where, um, Erica is married, but like has an open relationship. And he's one of her like long standing like <laughs> guy. And it's like, dude, no, yeah, no. It just keeps going. And it's like, really? Like everybody, mm-hmm. he finds one everywhere. Yeah. There's Celia everybody, Bunger. Yeah. And then of course there's Lisbeth. And then I don't remember what else. There's like other ones, I think in the book or. I think yeah, there's like mentions like, or yeah, something. It's and it's just like, come on. Completely absurd. It's like, yeah. no, no, nobody would be that excited by him. No. Um, <laughs> Like, he'd be lucky to be having sex, you know, once every three years. Yeah. And he was married because he has a daughter, which yeah. who disappears in the Swedish version of the film. But, um, so, yeah. But, I, yeah, I think this book is interesting because I think maybe I gave it the two stars. I think I gave the other two higher ratings because I think they're more focused. They're more focused. I think that what the, the problem with the first book is... It has that whole, like, because he's a journalist, I think he got too excited by that whole side. With the Venstrom. With the Venstrom. Yeah. And the main plot and what's so exciting about the first book is, like, what happened to Harriet? And what's yeah. the story? Yeah, the and bongers. that story wraps up, and then there's still a hundred or so pages <laughs> of this other shit that you don't care about. Yeah. And by the time you're done with the book, you almost forgot that you liked it so much. Like, mm-hmm. I like this other story, and I like these characters, because you're like, why the fuck did I just read a hundred pages of this shit that I don't care about? Yeah. Because that was never what was interesting about the book, and it's like, he really needed an editor that was going to be like, no, this sucks. Yeah. And I mean, maybe he didn't, because it's a national bestseller, and it's made... <laughs> yeah, made what do we it, know? So, like, whatever. <laughs> but, in my opinion, it could have used, yeah. you know, like, a big chopping. It just very much felt like it was two different things. Because yeah. there was the, the, the book ending Venestrom situation was very much a political economic commentary on like the Swedish uh, justice system and whatever else. Whereas the, Liz- the rest of it was like a whodunit. <laughs> yeah. And the Lisbeth part was very much an interesting thing too. You know, her own individual story arc which, of course, then picks up as you continue on with the books. You know, that's also very interesting, and that's her own thing. But, yeah, the main part of the book with the Vonger family and trying to figure out what happened to Harriet is very much just, yeah, it's a mystery. Yeah, it's a mystery. Yeah. With, like, really interesting, you know, detective yeah, the, who's, this, like, trying to figure it out. Like, yeah. it's just a fun story, and it's, like, a really, it's well-written. He's a yeah. good writer. Mm-hmm. It's just that it just goes on forever. And I always say, like, it's, it reads as if he was getting paid by the word. And it's just, like... <laughs> Okay, let's get to the fucking point. Yeah. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> um, yeah. And what I like about the American version is that it, it cuts out a lot of that stuff. It like makes stuff, it more it, palatable, yeah. Yes, like the the ending, like, that took 100 pages for him to write, they do in a couple minutes yeah. of, like, a few scenes. And it's it's fine because I don't really care about that. Yeah. And then they also, like streamline <laughs> yeah, the it's just, big ending of, like, yeah. what happened to Harriet. Yeah, because in the book, it's, like, it's... It's not even just a problem of having, like, too many storylines or whatever, because really there's just, like, three. There's Thunderstrom, Lisbeth, Bunger. But they don't mesh. They don't mesh. Because, and, like, the, some of them are just too long or Well, the Bunger one is essentially a serial killer, religious murder Story. Like, I mean, it's fascinating, but that's not what you would think to pair with. But, yeah, but then know. it just feels hokey, too, because, like, and don't listen to this if you haven't, you know, read the book or seen the movie. It's probably oh, yeah, this is spoilers but, yeah. all over the place. Um, but, like, Harriet's in Australia and, like, yeah. has a family and, like, a son, and it's like, why is she in Australia of all fucking places? It's well, just, I think like, it was just really... as far as she could get. But it's just, like, silly. It was yeah. just, like, weird. Like, it mm. was just stupid to me. Yeah. Like, I would have been happier if someone had actually killed her. Like, it was just like, <laughs> she's in fucking Australia. It's like, just dumb. And she's like, mysteriously sending him flower. Like, um, not Black Fist, sorry. She's mysteriously sending, uh, what the fuck is with him? Henrik flowers. And it's like, he doesn't know that she's alive. Like, why wouldn't you tell the one person who supported you? It's a good like, uh, clue in. Like, it is creepy. Like, who the hell is sending me flowers? Well, but yeah, then once you figure out it's Henry, it's, it's a Harriet, it's like, or like, what, or uh, Anita. Anita or Harriet? It's Harriet we're looking for. 
Yes. <laughs> Once you figure that out, it's just like, why did you think that was something that would be comforting and not just weird? Right, exactly. It just, like, seems stupid to mm-hmm. me. Um, and so the whole thing, it's like, and now we're going to travel to Australia to find... It just, like, felt weird, mm-hmm. and it kind of felt, like, anticlimatic. anticlimatic. It was just like... Well, especially uh, when there's 200 more pages of the book. Well, and then, yeah, and then you have 100 pages of the fucking, like, whatever storyline yeah. that I don't care about. Mm-hmm. So that whole thing was just, like, kind of... I liked in the mo- in the American version, it mm-hmm. was basically like, Harry, it's Anita. And it was, like, still mysterious, and it was, like, kind of hokey. But it was like, okay, well, at least they didn't have to travel to Australia and, like, yeah. add on another 30, pa- like, 30 minutes, I guess, since it's a movie. Yeah. Um, I actually kind of liked that ending better. It's not a bad one. It's not a bad alternative. Yeah. I think it just, like, like I said, it kind of just streamlined it for me because yeah. I don't really think having her be in Australia added any value to the book. I think the only thing it did was, because one of the things that I have a problem with in both movies, because Tina prefers the American version, I prefer the Swedish one. Um, But I think in neither movie do they really successfully convince you why someone like Lisbeth would actually fall in love with someone like Blomqvist. Because she doesn't have, you know, she's very different. Lisbeth is not normal in the way she views things and a lot of it has to do with stuff that you find out later about abuse at the hands of her father and you know her mother and stuff like that um but in the book one of the things that does happen about them finding out together you know because they see it through to the end so you get okay we catch you know the ultimate killer they both come to the conclusion independently elizabeth comes in saves blomkvist and says i'm going to take him about martin which, of course, is something that they do change in the American movie as well. A lot of Elizabeth is kind of interesting the way the different movies handle it. Um, but in the book, you know, she sets off after him. Martin veers into oncoming traffic, uh, which is different in the Swedish version. He has an accident and then Lisbeth does not save him while he set, catches on fire. She just watches him versus <laughs> um, in the American version. She's too far away to do anything. It has nothing to do with her. And it doesn't seem like Martin took the culpability into his own hands either. So it's interesting how that played out depending on what you were looking at. Um, but one of the things too, is that afterwards she goes back with Blomkvist. They realize what Martin's been doing. She wants to protect the memories of these women. And so together they then are like, we need to find where Harriet is, because Harriet's not in the safe. She's not one of the people, and Martin himself said he doesn't know where she is. And so they continue that search, find out she's in Australia, and the reason why she doesn't go to Australia in the book with Blomqvist is because her mother dies. And then when he flies out, and then comes back really quickly, in time to show up for her mom's funeral, which means a lot to her, and also cements their relationship a lot, and he winds up taking her to his cabin in the book and they stay there for a while while he's writing and she's kind of just recovering and you believe that they're falling in love and that there is strong, I mean, maybe not falling in love per se, but that there is a very strong emotional bond versus I feel like in both movies, it's very quick. I mean, especially the Swedish version, because I don't, I don't like that blonde fist, but it's just like, he's like, he's blah and he's, yeah, he's really blah. Sorry, but he's not attractive at all. No. So it's like this young girl. And I mean, yes, she has issues, but Mm -hmm. like, no, ew. He's like yeah. a middle-aged man. He looks like a middle-aged man and not a very attractive one. It's like, that. it's just meh. I'm not really sure what he was trying to, because it's played by Michael Nequist, I think is how you say his name. And he's a really good actor. Like, I've seen him in a bunch of other stuff, and I like him. And just for some reason, as Blomqvist, he falls flat. And it's, it's especially, I think, in comparison, because I, I know you're not as fond of... Um, uh, Numi Rapace in this role. Yeah, I love her, but I, and here's, I think, my issue with the Swedish version yeah. is like, and this is probably shallow, but neither Nomi Rapace, mm-hmm. is that how you say her name? Numi. Or the actor that plays Blancavis were what I, I guess, visualized mm-hmm. when I was reading the book. And then to not be able to hear them speak, it's like you're reading, you can hear them, but oh, I don't yeah, speak yeah. Swedish, so I'm reading subtitles. Oh, and they don't, like, they say that yeah. a lot when they're swearing. And they don't, like, <laughs> look like how I want them to look, mm-hmm. it's really hard to connect. And then in addition to that, the Swedish version's pretty long, and they throw it's in a lot long. of random shit that, like, wasn't in the book. The book already had a lot of random shit that shouldn't have been there. In like, the first one, they don't have a whole bunch of random stuff. It's the second and the third, where it's like, why is... The first okay. one's the closest. I don't remember. So I watched all three of them, yeah, Sweden, yeah. and I don't remember which no, is No, the second which, and the like, third are, like... Blo- like 
throwing them yeah. in together. The second and third but are really strange. The first one starts off well. It, it is very close. There's There are different things. Like, they don't... Blomqvist does not have a daughter in the Swedish one, so Lisbeth is the one who finds the biblical connection, whereas in the book and also in the American version, you do get that element of Blomqvist, which I think does humanize him more. It makes him more of a... You know, you see him kind of well, struggling to be decent, whereas I think in the Swedish version, they kind of take that away. Yeah. And it's just, he feels like he's just floating around ruining marriages. <laughs> yeah. And that, well, that whole thing in the book is stupid. Like, uh, yeah. the open relationship, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like a, whatever, a commentary on whatever that I don't need and don't care about. <laughs> yes. It's like, oh, can we not? But I think that visually, like, the American version, mm -hmm. like, you have Daniel Craig, who I can see someone, like, being attracted to him, yeah. he's an attractive person. Mm -hmm. Like, and then... Um, I don't know, what the hell is her name? Uh, uh, Rooney Mara. Rooney Mara looks more like she's really skinny. She's mm -hmm. really kind of boyish. Nomi Rapace just seems like a really pretty girl who they tried to make look edgy. And it just like, <laughs> she looks pretty Who and like, they, it looks like what they did. <clears throat> like it just, it didn't fit the description for me. So I'm like, okay, well you have this. And so I just could never like get into their characters, I think, like <laughs> as what I envisioned from the book. And I think mm -hmm. that I didn't have that issue with the American version. I also just like how quick and streamlined everything was in the American yeah. version. I think the storytelling was better. And I can, I don't know. I was, and I mean, at that point, I probably understood everything a lot better because I had read the book <laughs> and seen all the Swedish versions of the movies and knew the characters really well. So it might just have been that. But I think I, I will agree that I think the American movie was more, I think it was closer to, the book in general, aside from the changing of the ending. I think yeah. that it felt like a complete piece. The other problem with the Swedish version, it was made for TV. Yeah. And so it was meant to be sort of broken up and very long. Yeah. And so I think it, unfortunately, when you don't watch it as a movie, you're like, oh yeah. my God, this is really long, you know, but I think it's, um, and I guess I should say that I watch other movie, like I've seen many foreign films and mm -hmm. have read like and have read you know subtitles whatever and yeah it's not a problem with it it's not no. like you know oh this is the first foreign film you know what like no i've watched plenty of them and mm -hmm. i've liked them and i've been able to connect the characters but for some reason in this i just couldn't and it might also have just been that sometimes if i read a book and watch the movie right away which i did with the swedish version mm -hmm. i have problems with like every change that's made like i need to give myself time and by the time i'd seen the american version it had been a while apologies so, for the dog if you can hear um, that <laughs> so that could have also been an issue i i don't know but um i think yeah for me i think i come out of the series really liking Lizbeth particularly. And I think I already kind of probably had Numi Rapace's image in my mind because I read it and sort of had seen pictures of her. Okay. And so I think when I read it, I kind of already had her in my brain. Um, and in general, I liked the way she played it because I feel like, I felt like Rooney Mara was very much kind of a, a moody teenager. Whereas, I mean, and I think there are elements of Lisbeth being that in the books, too. But yeah. I think in, she feels in the books because, and again, you have the benefit of being in her head because it is a book. Yeah. You know, you get to see how analytical she is and how she deconstructs things and take things, takes things apart. And I think, for me, watching New Mirror Pass, I think she felt more calculating because she looks, Rooney Mara doesn't look like, she looks vague. Whereas Numi Rapaz looks like she's paying attention in different ways because she'll dart her eyes around. So she won't like necessarily sit on something. Whereas, I don't know, it's just for me the way that, and I think I also had a problem in general with the way that Lisbeth was handled in the American version. I think because you're, in the, in the book, lots of bad, I mean, lots of bad things happen to Lisbeth. Completely. Like just yeah, horrible things yeah, happen horrible to her. Yeah, horrible things happen and especially at the hands of, you know, she's very much at the hands of the government, at the state. It's the idea that, you know, we are not taking care of the people who are in, who are essentially helpless to the system. And we don't realize the extent to which it goes. And she's one of them because she, you know, her mom was declared enough to take care of her. And so she's under the care of um, Homer Palmgren, who has a stroke. And she gets put into, uh, what's his name? Niels Bierman uh, is in charge of her. And he winds up sexually assaulting her multiple times. Yes. And it's really disturbing. It's really upsetting. And I felt 
uncomfortable with the way they did it in the American version for completely different reasons than I did in the Swedish version. In the Swedish version, it's very, really close shots to make you feel uncomfortable. Um, the way that she gets her revenge is incredibly visceral. Like, it's really hard to watch. And it's all on from her perspective. Whereas there's weird scenes in the American version. And I know you said you didn't really, it might just be me picking stuff. Because again, I watched these so closely together. Yeah. The, it lingers too long on Bierman. It lingers too long on things that it's just, she's very hypersexualized in the American version. And not just like the movie itself, but also all the ads leading up to it. The marketing for the American version, she was like half naked in half of them. And it was just like, it was very odd. It felt, and I don't know if it was just by virtue of the way that the movie was filmed. Like, it is a very slick film, more so than the Swedish version, which is like... Yeah, I mean, it was know. very, like... I, I don't... I don't... I never got that from the... I mean, the rape scenes were awful, and mm-hmm. that's how I read... Like, yeah, I I'm not saying that they're like, like, it's okay. Like, it yeah. wasn't like that. But it was just... I, and I don't really think that I ever got, like, oh, she's more sexual. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, she kind of, like... In the book, everybody was, like, hypersexualized. Yeah. Like... Because everybody was wanting to sleep with, like, every, literally everybody wanted to sleep with Blockfest. It was completely ridiculous. <laughs> like, every woman that ever met him wanted to yeah. sleep with him. And it's like, so I think that in general, like, everything was, like, more open and, like, you know, whatever, 70s yeah. hippie. And so I don't really <laughs> think that, like, it was written or took place in the 70s, but that's how I felt. As far as we know. Like, apparently everybody in Sweden just, like, wants to sleep with Blockfest. <laughs> um, so I don't ever really think that, like, any of them weren't sexualized, like, yeah, she's Elizabeth is pretty like openly <laughs> like, but she's very matter of fact about it, and there is emotion attached to it in particular ways. So the thing is, like, she doesn't want to talk about her sexuality. She's not interested in it. It's just if she decides in the book anyway that she has a connection to somebody, she will pursue it. So like Miriam Wu is one that we don't really see until later in uh, the Swedish film series, we don't, she's in the American version very briefly yeah, when Blanc yeah. just like wanders in with coffee. Um, which again, Daniel Craig being just like, I brought breakfast. You're just like, Oh my One God. One of my favorite things about the American version, this has nothing to do with anything. Is Daniel Craig. Go, yeah. Daniel Craig. I'm like, <laughs> How the fuck in it, like, his glasses are always hanging off his face in the most ridiculous way. It's stupid. And, like, we have the like, same It just sweater. makes no sense. Like, why is he, like, he bought a sweater like, hanging from off his face? The other, my other favorite moment, it's hysterical, is, like, when he's, like, hiding in the bushes outside of Martin's <laughs> he, like, house. Falls down. <laughs> he, like, falls down. It's completely ridiculous. Yeah. He's like, why are you? No. No. So, they, yeah, so, well, yeah, so with Lizbeth, um... And I think it didn't help either that, like, again, I so I knew so much about the making of that film because I was, like, following it and being pissed off. And, like, uh, the director of it, whose name is just falling out of my fucking head. Isn't it David? Uh, Fincher. Fincher, because he did Gone Yeah, Girl. yeah, yeah. Like, he had her living with him before the movie. Oh, I didn't know that. That's creepy. Yes, to make sure that she was following, like, the right diets and mindset and stuff oh, it was really creepy and i think that that also transferred over into how i viewed a lot of the scenes in that movie the one it, yeah go yeah ahead. that's really creepy the one thing i don't like about the movie is and it was like got a lot of attention and everybody's like this is amazing but the soundtrack in the beginning of the movie it's like a fucking rock show <laughs> it's like so Trend annoying Resident, and it's yeah. like i hate the opening credits it's, it's so like, weird it's like, like why are there oil people yeah, it's I don't like it at all. No. And like people were like so impressed with it and like this soundtrack's amazing or whatever and, and it's like I don't it's get like it annoying. Like, I don't I don't that's the one thing I really didn't like and that other people ads seem for to like, hilarious yeah. though. The feel bad movie of Christmas. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Wah! And then like Terrible. pictures of a house. You're like, what? Yeah, the marketing was blah. I will say I love Inception, but that's the one thing I will never forgive it for is introducing the Wah! like sound and then they show you something and you're supposed to be suitably loud by it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing in Inception, but now they yeah. do it for everything, and I'm like, I don't care this much. Stop it. Yeah. Um, Visually, though, the movie is like pretty. It's lovely. It is really good. The American yeah. version. The American version um, is great. The, the Swedish version. The Swedish version is like it. it again, kind of looks like a movie made for TV. Like, yeah, it looks like a movie. It's, for TV yeah. Movie. So, meh. <laughs> but yeah, and I think it's you know, like I said again, I think that the Swedish film does more for Lisbeth's character and making her a bit more. But more removed, she feels more independent. 
you get more, I think, where you can kind of get the range of what she can do because you see her as very reserved. You see her viciously screaming in a subway. You see her beating the shit out of, you know, Vonger. I think she's just more, there's more anger in that one. And I think it's a more compelling view. But moving away from Lisbeth, Blomqvist, my favorite scene in the Swedish one is for some reason, Blomqvist is jogging up the side of a mountain and gets shot. <laughs> and I'm just like, you should get shot for jogging up the side of a mountain. Who does that? Like, yeah, he's just, he's not very good, but Daniel Craig's is so good. Um, what else? I do like the Swedish actors who portrayed Erica. I don't remember. I just um, hate the... Yeah, I don't really like Erica, Erica as a character. I think I just kind of liked, though, that in the Swedish version, because, again, you know, we talk about Hollywood and, like, the age problem in Hollywood. Um, her name was Lena Andre, and she's really awesome. She's beautiful, but she's actually... She was legitimately five years older than the, the actor. You know, normally they don't do that. Oh, okay. and I think and the, and she's like shown like you know with her shirt off and stuff. I mean, she's got a bra on. Yeah, but like, and she looks like a an older woman. Like she's yeah. not you know super done up. You know, I mean, um, Robin Wright is who plays Erica in the American version. Is she's beautiful, but you know, and, and she's fine too. But it's just like I thought there was something very human about a lot of the stuff in um. There's a humanity to a lot of the actors in the Swedish film, but I think that a lot of the actors in the American one were better. I think Christopher Plummer is my favorite ever, and he played Henrik Wagner in the American one. And I, yeah, just, I see him and great. I feel happy. Yeah. He's such a gentleman. <laughs> yeah. No matter what's happening. Yeah. I think that, well, and I don't think I had issues with, I think once I rewatched the American version, um, some of the stuff that you had mentioned about Elizabeth, I, I did notice more, yeah. um, but I don't think it bothers. <laughs> once I put it in your head. <laughs> yes, once you put it in my head, I'm like, okay, well, I can see that. And so I can see a lot of things. I just think it, as a movie, it's, a, it's much better. It is. Um, but I do think that part of the reason why some of the stuff didn't bother me initially is that I already liked Elizabeth as a character. And yeah. so I, if I've already liked her as a character, I think that sometimes I just read and I don't hate um, Bruni Mara that I think that, and or her portrayal, I think that I just... Some of the stuff that I already know about her from the book or from the Swedish movie, mm -hmm. I just like, you know, infer onto, or yeah. is that the right word, onto her character. So I'm like, oh yeah, she's badass because of this reason. And even if that didn't happen in the movie, I just like, yeah. it's in my head, so I just assume it. So sometimes it's hard for me to like separate out what I've seen in the book, unless I hate you know, unless everything's awful about it. And it's like well, yeah. clearly differences, but... And I mean, I did the same thing, but from the opposite way. Yeah. Because yeah. I also, she was in the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street and took over the role of Nancy and did a terrible job. Yeah. I mean, that and movie I was... It, I don't really remember. Good, but I love Jackie yeah. O'Haley, but no, man. Yeah. But she wasn't good in that. And again, like I said, I knew all that stuff about the create, like just living with the director. And I, it's just, it was so creepy and weird. This is why I never read anything about, like, yeah. real life anything to do with celebrities, because they're all fucking weird and <laughs> creepy and annoying. And they would make me dislike them, so I just try to avoid it. Yeah, no kidding. Um, yeah. But I think, like, I think both movies did, you know, again, you have a very streamlined version with the American film. They did change stuff to make it more accessible, but I think it still worked. They made... All the, uh, all the elements of the plot remained whole. Um, you got that idea. I think that in the Swedish version, just because they spend so much time, probably if you really want to get the various nuances, especially of the crimes themselves, and you get a little bit more, I think, of a sense of the history that they're working with in terms of certain like Swedish elements, which I think I wasn't familiar with, just by virtue of the fact that they spend more time on it. Yeah. So there is that, but I don't think necessarily that the meaning gets lost in the American version because they choose to move past certain things or make them faster. Yeah. So it's kind of I interesting. Think so. I think that it's just like the American version kind of knew what was what would draw people's attention, to be honest. Like, yeah. what was the good part of the book, as yeah. I put it. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, the good <laughs> part or the sexy part of the book is what happened to Harriet. And yeah. Let's tell that story and let's not have this other random storyline, which maybe if it was its own story would have been more interesting or yeah. if, if, if it tied into what happened to Harriet at all, maybe yeah. it would have been interesting or worth pursuing. But I think that just as a whole, it was like, okay, well, we need to include it to, I guess, not appease, but 
legitimize. To legitimize right? or to, I don't know, validate the book or to not piss people off who really like the book. But then also to, like, have it in a way where it's not going to detract from the main story, which was, I think, the most important part of the book. Yeah. And in the Swedish version, it's the juggling between Vanger and the Vennerstrom case. It's it's very long. Yeah. And again, and it's I mean, kind of confusing. Yeah. You know, like, there are some, I think... Swedish nuances that mm-hmm. of that whole story that like in America I don't think it necessarily made as much sense. Yeah. I don't think like people don't get arrested for slander in America. Like, no. <laughs> and, like which is what happened. I That's think all he was we in do jail. Here. Like, it's just like so Wait, was, there's a weird moment in the Swedish version where he actually goes to jail. And I'm not quite sure yeah, I don't why. Remember. It's really because he goes she goes and visits him and I'm just kinda like oh. um yeah. I mean yeah and like I said there's Again, with the Swedish version, too, they knew that they were going to make the second and third right away. So you needed to make sure that everything was there. Whereas with the American version, they didn't necessarily know. So they could kind of determine later how they wanted to build up. Like Henrik Wanger now being involved with Millennium, the magazine, um, with the fact that he was going to be funding it. You know, there were going to be different kinds of problems with it. You know, and that's not focused on as much in the American. It is there. It's not gone. Um, but you know, it's, it's not as strong as with the book and with the Swedish, uh, film just because, but yeah, I was really sad that they never did the, and it's probably for the best cause they probably would have, you know, sequels are, you know, sometimes really bad, almost always really bad. Weren't they thinking about revisiting it though? I think it's pretty much off the table. Oh, um, I thought there was new talk. Yeah. I don't think it's, I'm pretty sure it's off the table at this point. Um, I think because David Fincher became so popular, he's yeah. you know been fo- he did Gone Girl, which was huge for him, and then yeah. um, I don't really know like what. Well, I mean, obviously Daniel Craig, you know, is James Bond, so he's been oh, busy he's with done that. Now. But he's yeah. finally said he's done. But then like Rooney Mara is, you know, wait, is that her name? Yes. Shit. <laughs> getting their names confused. Rooney Mara is, you know, not getting any younger and to portray well. Apparently, as recently as November of 2015. They've been talking about it. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, as of November 16th, 2015, Rumi Mara says she's still appearing in Girl with the Dragon Tattoo sequel. Interesting. Yeah, I don't I know I must have that. wrestling earlier than that. I know that they all said they would still be willing to do it, but it wasn't financially successful, so... Yeah. I think that's well, like, been, we like the a market hurdle. was so weird. It was terrible. It's, it's a better movie than that, honestly. Like It is, yeah. They tried to kind of, I think... I think what they tried, to, what's funny is they tried to make that one super slick and super, like, hip and modern, and they wound up just putting together a solid movie. Yeah. It's not like a blockbuster. It's right. not. No. You know, and it's, I, that was what they were trying to do, and I think people probably went to it and were like, what? Yeah. Because it is really particular. Know, like, if people knew what it was, like, yeah. I mean, I know people knew what it was as a national bestseller or based off of a national bestseller, but... I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't know if it really resonated with the audience that it was supposed to. Yeah. It was also rated R, which is, it hurt it because rated R movie on Christmas and mm-hmm. has, you know, rape and. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a bit crazy. And like I said, I really <laughs> don't think that advertising did much for it. No, I don't think like so. Like the types of things they put in magazines and those stuff. It was so weird. And yeah. it just didn't, they really did try it. I think that was the, the, the big failing of it was kind of trying to make it hipper. And I think that it, it doesn't need to be. No, it doesn't need to be. Because I think the fact that all of this is popular, you know, the book is popular. Yeah. The long as fuck Swedish version with all of its at- uh, crazy details, it, with some of it screwed up, is really popular. That was a huge hit. And the movie, too. I mean, it's, it, they just tried to make it, it didn't need any more. It's, a, it's right. a surefire thing. And they were just trying to make it into something it wasn't. So I think yeah. that was the problem with it. Yeah. Um. But over, I mean, it was, yeah, I think that the ideas inherent in the story, the idea of, you know, because the, the Swedish title is, you know, was it Men Who Hate Women? Um, <laughs> more so than Girl with Dragon Tattoo, which, you know, they needed to make it. Like, for, like, for most things in America, like, you know, we don't know what a sorcerer or a philosopher's stone is, so it's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. You know, le- lest we get confused by titles here in the, uh, the good old <laughs> US of A, they tend to change shit on us. You know, but it's like... <clears throat> I think it, it creates an interest. The book creates interesting commentary pieces about the nature of how we treat gender people. Really, you know, we look at different the the, the mindsets of people, political, 
average old family, you know, business, whatever. And I think both movies actually do a good job of maintaining, you know, in relationships between people, the idea of what's valuable, you know, the, yeah. the search for independence and freedom from that type of sort of tyrannical overseeing, regardless of if it's a, you know, a Bjerman or a, you know, a Vennerstrom or whatever. I think that it's, it provides, and it has interesting messages in the book. And I think that the movies overall, regardless of which Lizbeth you like better or whatever, and how strange the bomb twists are, I think that they both actually do a really good job. So unlike our red dragon, <laughs> where we destroyed the one film <laughs> because it made no goddamn sense. I think that these two both, they both work. Yeah. And they both, I think, have something to offer. Mm -hmm. And the book also has something to offer. Yeah, so. if you liked the book, it's worth seeing both films. Yeah. But read the book first. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because sometimes, I don't know, I went to see, I think, the American version with people who hadn't read the book. Mm -hmm. And I think they were confused by a couple things. So. Yeah. Um, so, as I said, it, it does a better, like, a good job of streamlining it. But because some of these things are foreign to, I think, American Americans, yeah. some of it's like a little confusing. So. Yeah. So book yeah, first, book first, and then movies, and then yeah, the uh, Swedish versions are on Netflix and I think Hulu. Yeah. I don't know if the American version. You can go get it. Go to go to a movie store. <laughs> oh wait. Store. Yeah. Ones don't exist except the one by my house. Blockbuster. I hear that's a good place. Yeah. Go get yourself a card. <laughs> um. But anyway, yeah. yeah. So final thoughts on this. I think I kind of just talked over all of them. Yeah. I talked for five minutes during yeah. that. It's okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so go watch them. Barf of enthusiasm-ish. Not yeah. enthusiasm, I don't know, whatever. It's it's an interesting <laughs> series. And I think it's good, too, because it's like, you know, again, like we are saying, in America, we tend to get very monofocused. So I think it's interesting to read. And again, my, my friend in Sweden, I was like, have you read them? She's like, no. So it would be nice if she read them, Nat. <laughs> so I could ask her questions, Nat. Um, and so we could see what she kind of thinks about the portrayal of, you know, her own country. Yeah. Yeah. To come back to us and be like, this is completely false, and everything yeah, you thought about is Sweden wrong. is now wrong. Yeah. I'd be like, God damn it. Because everything I thought about Sweden is from this book. Actually, that's probably accurate. I really haven't yeah, thought I think about so. Sweden much after besides this book. That is a be heavy honest. weight to hold, Steve Larson. Yes. I hope that he was ready for it before <laughs> he died. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope that they give his girlfriend the rights to publish the actual fourth book. Yeah, it seems like Rather that's than not the fucking happen. awful <laughs> ghost written one, give her the. Come on. But anyway. Yeah. All right. So, All right, yep. Well, thank thanks, you for, thanks listening for listening to us for an hour. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye. 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 Possibly theme music here. <laughs>